Hello, my name is Mark, and today I want to take you through how to create a simple mechanism within the 3D experience uh, using Katia. Um, first, you want to make sure that you have the right apps. To do that, you'll need uh, the right role uh, activated or available to you. Um, either the mechanical and shape engineer is one role that unlocks the apps that we need, or you may have what's called an MMO uh, role, Mechanical Motion Designer is what that stands for. But since I have this mechanical shape and engineer, I'll be able to select on that. Um, we'll be able to look for two apps that will be eventually helpful to us, Mechanical Systems Design and Mechanical Systems Experience. Now, I already have the assembly built. You do need the part... Um, apps and the assembly app to be able to build them but these are the two that will allow you to animate motion into them uh, mechanical systems design allows us to design the motion whereas this allows us to do the testing and get results from those uh, tests so I'm going to start by choosing mechanical systems design uh, from within this app um, it takes us into the mechanical systems design section of the action bar and I need to define engineering connections for how this, uh, how the degrees of freedom are going to move within this part. So what I'll do is come down here to engineering connection. Um, now you can start with just a generic engineering connection and say user define and build them individually. It, by doing it this way, whatever degrees of freedom are left, it will automatically determine which type of joint best fits uh, that type of degree of freedom. Or you can expand under engineering connection and be able to have some predefined um, joints that will basically lay a template out for us. For example, I want this rectangular uh, block with a square hole in the middle to be fixed, so it's not going to move. So I'll just click on fix here, select on that component, and the engineering connection gets placed. Okay. Um, for visualization purposes, I'm going to right-click on that component and go to Properties. Let's see here, Properties. And let's change the color so we can see that it is a different component and not get confused. Let's make it blue, or it's purple color. Now, if I want my engineering connection, this time I could go with Prismatic, which is what I want. By choosing that, it automatically gives me a template to choose the um, types of references that I want to use and the types of constraints that I want. So this means there's going to be a coincident between two lines. This is going to be a contact. You can hover over it and it'll tell you what that means after a second or two. It loads. It's supposed to anyway. Um, if you grab the wrong one, you can click on Use Template and pick what you want. There's the contact I was looking for. And here's an offset. And what this symbol means is it's going to be controlled. So the offset's going to control the range of motion. is going to control whether it moves or not. And this is the offset's between two planes, this contact's between two planes, and this coincident is between two lines. Now this will also build a prismatic template, but the difference is this is two coincidences between lines. It's not wrong, it's just a different way of doing it. This one has the offset... Uh, being controlled between a point and a plane. So we can pick which one is best fitted for our role. So I'm going to come in here and grab that one. It automatically gives me the coincident, the contact, and the offset, and the references. If you do need to deviate from what the defaults are, you can unclick this lock, and you can come in here and say clear type and be able to uh, redefine those. We could right-click in here and delete that offset completely and be able to add a brand new one in. So you're still not stuck with it, um, even if it does try to lock you in. So what I'm going to do is say, okay, I want a coincident. The coincident is going to be between this edge of that part and the corresponding corner here, that edge of that component. Tells me it's now green because I've given it some references. It doesn't know if it's the right references, but it at least thinks it's correct. Contact, I'll say this face, and it's going to be contacting that face right there. And then finally, the offset. Let's go with the top of the purple uh, square pin and the top of the block. 238 is the distance. 
Now it shows me the distance here. This is the one that is going to be controlled. If you had forgotten to do this or grabbed the wrong one, driving means it's just, a, just going to stay that value. But if we say controlled, now it's going to be a value that we can manipulate and be able to move the value and change the distance on it so that it animates. Um, it's currently set to this value. I'm going to say it's going to go all the way down to zero is the low limit. And the upper limit, I don't really want it to get taller than that, so I'll just say 240. Just round off that number so that it's in the middle of those two values. Hit OK. It asks if I want to, the current interface status is no clash. Do you want to make a clash detection or no clash detection? I'll say yes. And it adds those two engineering con connections into the assembly. Now, you'll notice that there are a little swirling symbol over them. They're not up to date. I'll click on standard and update those. Just made sure that they're currently applied and the parts didn't have to move anywhere. Now, to be able to test this to see if it's going to simulate correctly, what I'll do is come over here to mechanic or mechanism representation. Select on that. It comes up with this window right here. Uh, we'll call it prismatic mechanic mechanism representation. I am going to come over here to mechanism preferences and ensure that include all kinematics uh, connections into the mechanism. So those connections are going to automatically be brought in as joints and create all possible kinematic commands. The command is going to be that one that we said is um, driving the value of the offset. I'll hit OK, and it now creates that prismatic representation. And if you see as you hover over it, it shows an arrow showing that that's the direction it's going to move in. Now, there are some contextual menus you get if you click on it. You can play with it. But what I want to do is come over here to Mechanism Player. Give it a second to load. Of course, it put it on a different screen for me. But here is that mechanism player and I can grab this slider and pull it all the way down to zero which makes them an offset of zero between the two surfaces or I can drag this back up to a higher value or manipulate it in between we can reset it I can set it to a specific value and if I hit close by default it'll revert back to its original position also when you go into simulator you can grab it and drag it yourself and it has a little ruler telling you which position it's at so you can make move them now we can develop this into much more complex mechanisms where a lot more features are hinging off of the chain of connections but this is the basics for being able to set up your uh, mechanical systems design app uh, and be able to set up a simulation uh, the other app I discussed was Mechanical Systems Experience. If I click on that, it will take us through and try to create a uh, simulation. And we'll be able to define that. And it will take us into the Mechanical Systems Experience app. This app gives us all kinds of controls for being able to play videos, for being able to do swept volumes of the space that's going to take for it to move through its entire, uh, entire area, being able to do different things here like um, excitations and other values that are important and um, measuring um, the parts in different positions. I hope you found that helpful.